so in the last lecture we had seen how blastocyst was formed and today we will discuss how this blastocyst is implanted into the uterus hello i'm dr azaz from medicovisual.com welcome to this visual lecture at about day 5 or day 6 after fertilization the zona pellucida degenerates right and that is called hatching of the blastocyst and as the blastocyst hatches out of zona pellucida something is exposed on the surface of the cytotrophoblast and these are selectin molecules so these selectin molecules are exposed and they bind with their receptors on endometrium right so in this way these selectins due to presence of these selectin molecules the endometrium of uterus sort of captures the embryo that was floating into into the uterus right meanwhile the endometrium during this time period is well prepared for implantation how come first you can see the glands they become more deep specialized and more tortuous and they start secreting they start pouring out uterine milk that uh, that provides nutrition to the embryo secondly the, it, the the endometrium becomes more vascular more the tissue endometrial tissue become more hedimatous and thirdly these cells the endometrial cells they become filled with glycogen and fat and as they become filled with glycogen and fat they become fatty tissues not fatty tissues they become polyhedral shaped right so these cuboidal cells as they become filled with fat and glycogen they become polyhedral right these cells as they become filled with glycogen and fat and they become polyhedral now they are called decidual cells and this this process this reaction it becomes more marked and more pronounced as the implantation occur with the touch of that embryo with the endometrium all these things these reaction this reaction it becomes more pronounced especially at the site of implantation and then this pronounced reaction it spreads generally to the whole of the endometrium and what is this called this is called decidual reaction now a million dollar question here the question is that does decidual reaction occur each month during the secretory phase of menstrual cycle or it will only occur if implantation will be there yes what do you think i'm not sure Huh, that's a big controversy among embryologists. Although this decidual like reaction, this decidual reaction like reaction occurs each month during the secretory phase under the action of progesterone. But this reaction, it becomes more marked and more pronounced only and only when this, this, uh, this embryo will touch the endometrium. Right? So most embryologists think that as the embryo touches the endometrium and try to implant, burrow inside, then as the reaction becomes more pronounced, that should really be called decidual reaction. Right? But some other embryologists, they think that this decidual-like reaction, because it is occurring each month, whether or not embryo comes, whether or not fertilization happens, so they say that each month decidual reaction occurs. So it's a controversial thing. Then there are some awesome embryologists who have really ended up this debate. What they say is that during each month in the mid secretory phase of menstrual cycle, the decidual like changes that occur, that should be called pre-decidual reaction. And if the embryo comes and it, it tries to implant in the, in, the, in the endometrium, then it really is decidual reaction. So what they say is that pre-decidual reaction occurs each month, but decidual reaction only occurs when embryo try to implant itself into the endometrium, right? 
I will share reference to the books that discusses pre-decidual reaction in the description. Right? So let's move forward. So initial loose attachment of embryo with the endometrium, it, it is mediated by selectin. And then, and then there is a tight attachment that embryo, it, it really integrates in the endometrial tissue by these integrins and what is this F? F is for Well, I am not Sigmund Freud to say this for embryo and mother relationship. F is for fibronectin. So this real tight attachment between mother's endometrium and embryo is mediated by fibronectin and integrin molecules. So after this integration of embryo with the endometrium, what happens is that these trophoblastic cells, they proliferate rapidly and they form new trophoblastic cells at the embryonic pole, right at the site of attachment with the endometrium. Now as they proliferate, some of these trophoblastic cells, they fuse with each other and they lose their cell membrane right and now they act as a single entity right and this single entity which is which, which in english we call syncytium this single entity is now called syncytiotrophoblast and these cells with a clear cut cellular boundary or clear cut cell membrane they are called cytotrophoblast cyto means cell and trophoblast means as they are concerned with nutrition trophic trophic mean nutrition so they are called cytotrophoblast so now trophoblast has been divided into syncytiotrophoblast and cytotrophoblast so what these syncytiotrophoblast will now do is that syncytiotrophoblast has excellent invasive potential it it can invade the endometrial tissue of mother by releasing some proteosomal enzymes and some special factors that will cause apoptosis of cells of the endometrium right and in this way this embryo is embedded into the endometrial tissue right and this is called implantation at the end of first week there is superficial implantation it is slightly embedded into the endometrium and later on in the week two the embryo is more deeply embedded into the endometrium and remember as it is embedding into the endometrium you know these decidual cells that were filled with the glycogen and fat so since it your trophoblast it gets nutrition by eating up the glycogen and fat out of these cells as these cells are eroded it gets nutrition from the from the glycogen and fat right now as the embryo is embedded into the endometrium this endometrium now should not be shed off as you know during the menstruation the functional layer of endometrium is shed off each month and now because embryo is embedded into it it should not be shed off otherwise there will be loss of pregnancy and that should not happen so this this baby this future baby should send a message to corpus luteum and that message is in the form of hcg human chorionic gonadotrophin this hcg it is released into maternal blood and it as it goes to the ovary through blood here it will stimulate the corpus luteum corpus luteum will become happy and it will proliferate and it will start releasing lots of progestational hormone what is that progesterone progesterone is progestational hormone as the level of progesterone continue to rise this wall will not shed off right and this corpus luteum it is now converted into a happy corpus luteum corpus luteum graviditatis or you can simply call it corpus luteum of pregnancy it remains there for about two months and it will continue to secrete progesterone and after that it will be degenerated and placenta will be formed and that placenta will secrete its own progesterone right another thing that hcg will do is that it will induce nausea in the pregnant woman 
most of the pregnant women especially in first trimester they experience nausea and why they experience nausea the reason is that the culprit is hcg hundreds of years back when there was no pregnancy test the elder ladies and mothers of the family they used to see that okay this woman is nauseating uh, she must be expecting a baby so they start caring for that woman right so that is the significant of significance of hcg another thing that it start releasing is that epf early pregnancy factor so at this time embryo start producing and secreting early pregnancy factor interesting thing is that this early pregnancy factor it can be detected in the serum of mother as early as about 36 to 48 hours after fertilization how come actually what happens that when the embryo is about two cell or four cell stage it start producing some unknown factors and these unknown factors stimulate the ovary of mother to produce epf early pregnancy factor it is not itself producing epf initially right it stimulates the ovary of women to produce epf and later on it start producing its own epf early pregnancy factor both epf and hcg they have immunosuppressive function you know this embryo it has its own unique genome which is different from the genetic makeup of of the mother so the maternal leukocytes maternal immune system may reject this embryo but epf hcg and some other factors they prevent this rejection right hcd can be detected in serum of mother at about 6 or 7th day after fertilization some of the hcg it from the mother serum it also spills into urine and that is the basis of urinary pregnancy test normally the embryo should implant at upper or upper middle part of body of uterus at its anterior or posterior wall usually at posterior wall right if it implants at any other location that is called ectopic pregnancy that is ectopic implantation that is implantation at is at an abnormal site so what could be that abnormal sites the most common is tubal pregnancy it may implant in any part of the uterine tube but most common is implantation at ampulla of uterus ampulla of uterine tube actually as we have already discussed that the fertilized ovum i mean zygote it divides and as it divides as it undergo as it undergoes cleavage it has to move toward the uterine cavity and this movement is mediated by the cell reaction of cilia present in the uterine tube so if there is some problem with the cilia the fertilized ovum the zygote it may remain at this point at ampulla and it will continue to grow at this point and ultimately it may threaten to rupture this uterine tube and that is an emergency situation right sometimes what happens that it may go back the fertilized egg it may go back into into the infundibulum of tube or maybe even into the ovary or sometime it may even fall into abdomen and that is called abdominal ectopic pregnancy the tubal pregnancy as i have told you it is most common type of ectopic pregnancy sometimes what happens that scandry oocyte it may fail to come into the ampulla and the sperm may come here in the infundibulum or even it it may go into the ovary to fertilize the scandry oocyte and sometimes even the zygote may fall back into the ovary it may also implant at cervix or in the interstitium of body of uterus so this was about implantation and ectopic pregnancy thank you so much for watching this video